Okay. Welcome everyone to the BIA Board of Management uh, agenda tonight. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order at 5.32 on April 9th, 2024. The um, first up is the approval of the agenda. So there is an amendment to tonight's agenda. Uh, I would like to add a closed session to discuss board memberships following the agenda items. And I have a mover for the agenda, okay? And a seconder, okay, thank you. All in favor? Oh, sorry, any discussion? All in favor? Perfect, carried. Uh, next up is the declarations of interest. Um, does anyone have any declarations of uh, interest with an item on the agenda? No. All right, we shall move on. Um, delegations and presentations. Um, there isn't any tonight, so we'll move on from that. And minutes from the previous meeting. The recommendation is that the minutes dated March 19th be accepted as presented. May I get a mover? Okay, and a seconder. All right, perfect. Um, all in favor? Okay, carried. Um, so Nicole's not here, so who's going to be? So I will, I will we'll go do the, the uh, financial. The okay. financials. All right. So the only update from the uh, previous meeting is the added uh, $380 for the South Granville Tourism Guide, which was approved by email prior to the last meeting and then ratified at the meeting. It included a digital component, so I included it in the digital marketing line item there. They're doing an e-guide as well. You've seen the ad in the uh, proof version. It, it looks good, and it will be uh, that guy will be distributed, I believe, sometime this month or in May. Uh, so as it stands uh, right now, you committed uh, fourteen hundred and sixty-seven dollars in the marketing and promotions budget. Nothing has been committed out of that physical improvements budget yet which when you take into account the administration expense for the year, leaves about $17,000 to be allocated. Uh, reminder that there is a balance in that uh, general reserves of uh, $25,000 less those two 2023 commitments, the public art and the stock gap ramps that will go ahead this year, uh, leaving about $20,400 in that general reserve for 2024. All right. Thanks, Justin. Um, is there any questions? The recommendation is that the financial report be accepted as presented. May I get a mover? Okay. And a seconder. Perfect. And any discussion? All in favor? Carried. All right. Um, so the next upper chair updates. Do we have any? No. No, I don't have any updates. And staff updates. So I'll ask Jeffrey for a hearing. So I'll take you through a few items here. There'll be a couple that I think uh, you'll want to stop on a little bit longer as we go through. But just the first update is on the annual general meeting, which was held just two weeks ago, I guess. Uh, March 26th in the Ruth Emerson room. There were 19 uh, people in attendance. Dana provided an economic development and tourism report. I did a downtown year in review, and Natalie did the 2024 chairs reports and uh, accepted and approved the budget and financial, the 2023 financial statements and the 2024 budget at that meeting. Uh, the catering was uh, Katarina's Coffee Shop. I uh, had coffee and lemonade and some treats. So the Leo Boyvin International Showcase was held the last week in uh, last weekend in March. Uh, you will recall the BIA sponsored uh, was a sponsor of that tournament. It had twelve teams come into town for the for the weekend. Uh, they averaged about three thousand in attendance throughout the weekend. Um, we had a Prescott tourism booth and informational signage there, which included the new restaurant rack card. We did a food and drink 
guide rack card that directs people to the listings online as well as lists all the restaurants, fast food, cafe, convenience and grocery in town so people can have one card that they can pick up or something like that and know where they can go uh, eat. We did have an Explorer Prescott draw and you can see grand prize uh, draw winner there, Lily, who uh, enjoyed her, her package. I uh, wanted to just uh, do a little bit of a Prescott pop-ups and farmers and crafters market update as we're coming up in that season. The next meeting will be, uh, I believe, about a week in advance of, of over actually days in advance of opening for both of them. So in the Prescott pop-ups front, uh, there are six seasonal retail cottage vendors. So these are the folks that will be occupying the, the sheds down there. Cecilia's Pond Soap Plus, who does uh, handmade soaps and lotions. Uh, Forwarders Antiques will be back again this year. A uh, new vendor is Stu Zoo Designs, who uh, they're uh, interior designers from Cornwall, and they do uh, 3D printed uh, uh, homeware, stuff like that. Uh, they'll have that in there. Old Magic from downtown Prescott will have a second location, a pop-up location, where they'll have readers, uh, things like face painting, as well as some retail. Uh, well quite a bit of retail, but something a little different from what they have in store. BUBU will be back. That is uh, used, slightly used and vintage, uh, mostly ladies clothing. And Studio Marty and Chantel's Custom Creations uh, will be in one as well. They will be doing retail. Studio Marty does fine art. Chantel does stained glass. They'll be taking a retail cottage together and they're going to do something pretty neat in there that they will be uh, both doing some of their art work right on site as well as having some of their participatory classes and in a couple items I'm going to talk about something that studio uh, that Marnie studio Marnie has has uh, proposed for some public art that's pretty neat. Um, so we also have two confirmed right now monthly vendors these are folks that are coming in for short term periods uh, GCP crafts and Sandon studios. And five confirmed food and beverage vendors. So Arbor Solar Brewery, uh, you may have seen that announcement on Facebook. They are going to have a pop-up location. Despite the fact that they put the lighthouse on there, it's not in the lighthouse. They are having a... Having a yeah, uh, panic when that happened. <laughs> constructed, uh, they're having a structure that they are having built, uh, like the pop-ups, that sort of in between a pop-up and a food truck that will be down at the East End. Uh, Judy's Wooden Spoon will be back this year. Uh, they do comfort food, uh, fries. They do some, some Down East Newfoundland uh, treats there as well. A new food vendor is Addictive Sweets. So they are, uh, it's a gentleman from uh, east of Ottawa who's uh, learned a Belgian waffle recipe from, from his wife that he's bringing down with some, so they'll be uh, basically handheld Belgian waffles that have uh, chocolate, fruit, et cetera, coming with them to take around as well as some other sweets. Katarina Cole isn't here tonight, but Katarina's will be coming down during the summertime for a little second pop-up location down there. And in the lighthouse will be River Vise Picnic. They were in the uh, red pop-up last year. They're doing something similar with a little bit more in that uh, lighthouse pop-up this year. Including soft ice cream. Including soft Ooh. ice cream. There will also be so one of the one of one of the sheds is sort of being reserved on that rotating weekly basis. So there'll be different people coming in, as well as different monthly vendors who will be added throughout the season. So this is more both the monthly vendors who who have been confirmed, as well as, as those ones that you'll see there all summer long. So this summer there will be the six ten by tens. There will be a 10 by 16 space, and there will be two smaller spaces there as well, in addition to the food, food trucks. Is there anything, Dana, you want to add? No, no, I think Can you I ask a question, Justin? Okay, sure. What are the, um, the two new vendors, like the crafts and the studio? What, what are they? So Sandon Studio, she, she, was, she came down for, I believe, one weekend last summer. She does... Uh, Things like handmade purses, and th there were some other things there. And she was she was there for one weekend, and not 
not a particularly nice weekend. It was one of the sort of mid-fall September weekends and couldn't keep up with the traffic of people coming in to, to pick things up in there. She was very excited to come back this year. And GCP Crafts is actually one of one of Jeannie's vendors down there. And she oh. also does sewing type, mm -hmm. type things there too. Yeah. And is it May Long weekend not the opening? Yeah. Yes. So the Friday at the May Long weekend will be the, the opening opening night for that. I think that's the 17th, May 17th. And we'll be planning a, kind of a grand opening similar to last year. We want to have that annual, you know, ribbon cutting pop-up launch for the season. And they'll run right to Thanksgiving. All the vendors would have the option to stay until Thanksgiving. Some may choose uh, to stay till Labor Day, again, weather dependent. But they are required at minimum to be there May 2, 4 to Labor Day. Friday through Sunday. But we are encouraging everyone to increase their hours and add more days as the, the traffic warrants. So on the farmers and crafters uh, market, it will be opening May 18th, Saturday, May 18th. So the Saturday of that uh, Victoria Day long weekend. Uh, we have 13 applications so far, but I think the 14th might be sitting in Jeannie's hands over there. Uh, so there'll be five, six returning vendors who, who have applied so far. We're doing continued social media, print, radio, and targeted recruitment uh, of vendors. One thing we really, really would like to see more of this year are produce vendors. So if anyone knows any Produce. Ranging from ranging from small garden producers yeah. to to larger farms that would want to come in, uh, we'd love to have them. Uh, one of the things is that once you get a sufficient quantity of farm-based vendors, which some of our other vendors qualify as farm-based vendors, but once you get a su sufficient quantity, you you meet requirements related to uh, being an official farmer's market, which opens up some, some things related to uh, health unit rules, food regulations. Mm -hmm. And it would be ideal both from that perspective and from the perspective that people come to a farmer's market, they want to buy a tomato. So if you, uh, if you know of anyone who, who would be interested in coming down this summer, please feel free to send them our way. <clears throat> And this, I can say, it is certainly not her lack of effort on our part to um, recruit produce vendors who either exist locally or regionally. We certainly are aware, as, as I'm sure many of you are, of, of some who exist, and there's certainly been a targeted recruitment that we've just exhausted all efforts with the local ones. We're, we're looking for some, some new ideas because we're just not getting uptake from the players um, that I think you we've approached to date so any new ideas and as justin said specialty unique things like someone may be doing microgreens maybe another one is just specializing in one type of produce it doesn't need to be someone that's got the whole gamut we can get enough of you know people doing different things now all of a sudden we've really got ourselves a, a market and it opens up a world of possibilities for um, what we can bring in for food vendors that are preparing food on site too with some of those regulations, which we're pretty excited about. We've got some new interest from some on-site, um, like prepared food takeaway items, which is another thing a lot of people have been requesting that I'd say has been kind of lacking to date. Similar to Bevy's pretzels, you know, someone doing a hot item that you can grab and eat as you walk through the market and uh, shop the vendors. Yeah, it's growing and we've got uh, an amazing response so far just in the first couple of weeks of marketing. Is there a cost? For them to come in there? So it is $15 uh, market or $175 for the entire season. Very affordable. Mm -hmm. The season runs through the Thanksgiving weekend. And if someone fifty, did you say? $175. $175. And if someone signs on for that seasonal rate, that includes all of the, we will likely do some evening markets throughout the summer and special markets. So if someone's a seasonal <laughs> vendor, that includes Those all the farmers market markets throughout the season. And there is an insurance requirement too. All vendors do are required to uh, have insurance. We there are some uh, providers that we can certainly connect vendors with if they're looking for assistance. 
and it's quite affordable now than the insurance. Yeah, um, there's a company that specializes specifically in farmers market and event related insurance. Why is it escaping me? What's the name of it? So there's Duo, Duo which, thank which you. does a lot of those, and then there's also Zen Insurance, which is an interesting one that some people have used that's around the same price and provides coverage. But there's no more questions farmers market wise. Jump over to the affiliate membership review and updates. So you may recall, uh, I believe it was at the February, January, February meeting, we uh, uh, an associate membership program, which would allow businesses that aren't located downtown to participate uh, in, join the BIA, uh, have some some both participation and input in, in uh, the downtown events. The idea that there are some downtown-like businesses that might not be located in the Riverwalk District uh, from the idea that it, it's good for, for all businesses to be able to have this attraction where people are coming in. So we've had this, this opportunity for these businesses in a targeted fashion to join as an associate member. So we didn't go over this before. I want to do one more review before we took sort of the, the, the next step forward, uh, just because we have some new members and, and see what, where folks are now. So the recommendations from them were to establish an associate member program, um, to limit it to businesses that are located within Prescott, but outside the BIA levy area, uh, to sort of focus on, on, on the municipality itself. Uh, but these businesses could be home-based businesses. They could be seasonal businesses. The idea was uh, to focus on the downtown-like businesses. These are, are the types that you would sort of traditionally see in a downtown, but may not be located in the Ruach district right now. So this would allow these businesses associate membership to, sort of, to have open participation in downtown events, things like future sidewalk sales and food events. The sidewalk sale, for an ex example, this could be a good way to help sort of incorporate the uh, service businesses and their locations downtown. If you could, if we could associate an associate member with one of those non-retail businesses downtown, for, for some sidewalk space and, and get everyone involved there. Um, would provide them with marketing and promotional opportunities, uh, sort of co-promoting with the BIA and, and, and their pro promotional uh, undertakings. It would allow, uh, these associate members would be <clears throat> allowed and encouraged to participate in things like the committees and working groups. So this, could both take some of the uh, sort of burden of board members to have to be on multiple committees and give an opportunity for sort of outside input and getting more people involved. And the main thing too here would be that the associate members would not be eligible to sit on the board of management, so on this board, or to be voting members either here or at an annual general meeting. Uh, that's not something that would be feasible or workable, uh, but they would be, you know, able to participate in those committees and, and take part in that way. And after a review of associate membership programs in other similar municipalities, the recommended yearly fee for, for this would be $125. So I did include in the package that went around sort of the uh, one page proposal there that has some of the more uh, detailed parts of, of it, but this was the, the main idea of, of that associate member program. So the next steps from here would be to, first, I, I think uh, it would be a good idea to sort of start this with some targeted recruitment of, of those businesses that, that feel like they fit. So. One of those things would be to look at a working group, either separate from the ones we're going to talk about there tonight or, or coming out of that same marketing or promotional group that could identify those potential members and, and that could be targeted, approached for joining. Uh, we would 
go forward completing the full recruitment package, which, which would include the BI and promotional materials, what an associate member would get along with an application form. And because this would be a sort of change to the way the BIA uh, operates, it would require a bylaw amendment that, that the BIA would have to pass and ask uh, council to uh, consider, and it would go to, to council for consideration and, and approval at that point. So I guess this is just an opportunity here tonight if anyone had any uh, new thoughts on associate members before we take the next step forward or on, on the associate idea of the associate member program. Any concerns related to the parameters that have been proposed? Okay, <clears throat> I have a question. If, if somebody is, um, I'm just trying to understand, if somebody is like a downtown like business and decides to become um, an associate, would they, so the benefit that they're getting is that they may be able to say, for example, set up a sidewalk sale right. downtown. So would that pull away from the uh, like pop-up shops, do you think? No, I think really, and the purpose, like the ultimate purpose of the pop-up shops is to drive traffic into the downtown and to create new businesses for some of those vacant spaces to provide potential entrepreneurs with a, a more cost-effective location to kind of test the market, see if it's going to work for them. If it does, that would position them to maybe move into that, you know, brick and mortar space in the downtown. Um, we don't generally like for the pop-ups, you know, these would be businesses also existing brick and mortar ones, for example, that wouldn't necessarily be in a position to say, come down to the pop-ups, but would be very much in a position to say, have a sidewalk sale as part of an event. Um, looking say to Edward Street North, for example. Mm -hmm. So the BIA district ends at Dibble Street. Mm -hmm. So we've got a, a weird kind of dead zone where businesses kind of don't fall into the downtown core. They don't fall into the uptown core because they're south of the railroad tracks. For example, Pet Value, the new, the Prescott Deli, IT Revolution, um, the salon that's going to be opening, um, Charity is relocating her business to 695 Edward Street. So she would no longer be eligible to participate in the BIA. Port Alano, before they closed, would have been a prime example of a, an associate member that isn't located within the downtown core, but would still be the type of business that you would naturally see in that that you know typical main street area so it's really for those ones as well and then it also gives us an opportunity to promote them so as part of bia promotions those businesses would now be included in some of the promotions that we're doing whereas they never could before okay so i think it would be um and it would potentially for some of those entrepreneurs um, home-based businesses you know they may not be in a position to look at a pop-up but maybe an opportunity to have a sidewalk sale here and there could then position them to now go down to a pop-up at some point. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. So they, like you guys, are, I mean, I didn't read that um, package, I guess, that came, that outlines what they get. But so if I was at a business and how would you sell that to me? You'd say, if you pay us $125 for the year, this is what you get from us. What is it? The promotion, I got that. So it would be the opportunity to participate in the, the promotion. So if you were outside the BIA area and you were say, um, say there was a summer passport in the BIA alone, then there would be an opportunity to participate in that. So when we have, uh, social media campaigns uh I, what was that two summers ago three summers ago there was the rediscover the riverwalk district one so it would be an opportunity for for those folks to participate in that um i think the main benefit in addition to that comes from things like participating in the sidewalk sales uh, mm -hmm. participating in uh hopefully future food events where we can integrate some of those uptown uh, restaurants into, say, a, a downtown street level food event during that time period. Um, and also, too, that they get to be part of those committees, right? So they get to have a voice, but not just sitting 
here like we do once a month. And yeah, but, sort of like an active participation. Yeah. The best example being um, the Riverwalk Wonderland Committee in the lead up to that. That that was, you know, the BIA committee members who were taking a role on that. Um, being able to sort of integrate more folks into, into that and allow them to participate and provide input. I and, think it might be and I will say selfishly, it is it is also an economic development initiative in the fact that if we create a space for maybe some of those businesses that are currently in the downtown or could be home-based entrepreneurs, it could eventually result in that business coming permanently. Mm -hmm. So really just trying to, you know, provide more, more space for some of those businesses that are currently on the outside of, of that prime, you know, destination. Because it is, the downtown in itself is very much a, um, you know, a target destination. And some of these businesses just aren't, aren't on, you know, those normal paths of travel benefit them to just get a little bit more exposure sometimes as part of some of our other festivals and events. Okay. Do you think that there might be um, a situation where the businesses who are not part of the BI area, if they become an associate member, that they might overshadow the businesses that are like legitimately part of the BIA? Like, a, do you think there would be ever a situation like that? I would say no, just based on the way that we've structured the program and kept it, you know, very limiting. For example, they don't have an ability to sit on the board of directors. Right and have a vote so they can't, you know, influence um, the decisions of the BIA from that respect. And we've really limited it. And we would ensure, our staff would ensure that no associate member gets any sort of promotion over and above what a regular BIA member would get. And that's something that you as the BIA board will hold us to as well. And that is your duty to say, if there are concerns as a board in the way that this is evolving, then absolutely we'll make okay. changes to that. And that's where we really rely on, on the board members themselves to provide us with that direction and guidance. It would be a, it would be a, a year by year membership, right? Um, so a person that was a member in 2024, if there was a reason not have them be a member again in 2025, that, that could be something. And each, each one of these associate members would have to be basically voted on and accepted by the okay, existing yeah, okay. board of directors I each see. year. Okay. Yes, yeah, good point. So you would always have, there's an opportunity to say, weed out. Yeah, but this isn't mm -hmm. working. Right, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You feel don't, you know, contribute to the overall offering of the BIA. Right, right, okay. And I mean, that's, yeah, that, I think that's one of the ideas of the associate member program is what what's sort of missing right now and how can we demonstrate, you know, pull that in and demonstrate the viability of it in, in that district too. And hopefully, as Dana said, get some of those people opening storefronts down there eventually. Right, okay. okay. And something else, too, that um, members may not be aware of, if you've had an opportunity to take a look at that map, <clears throat> the way the lines of the BIA are drawn, there is a two-block <clears throat> portion of the downtown that has quite a few businesses in it on the east end that don't currently fall into the BIA. Mm -hmm. So the BIA ends right at Katarina's. And you have quite a few businesses down east of that, sorry, west of that, mm -hmm. that would, you know, could potentially be a fit. There's also been businesses in the past that have operated out of some of the residential properties along King. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to see some interest from potential, some property owners uh, looking to do that. So also trying to support the future growth of our downtown core as well is the more intent behind you know, the economic development side of it provides nothing, you know, no benefit for business, but it does because now we've got a bigger, broader area to market and more of an offering that, you know, people would deem is more worthy to, to come to and, and visit. And certainly if, you know, at any time it's not going well, that is the prerogative of the board to simply terminate the associate membership program at any time. And we would certainly build that into the, the bylaw amendment that would have to go before council. Are you accepting questions from the general membership? Or just like boring questions? No, we're always happy to entertain questions. Um, sorry. Yeah. You mentioned 
uh, or doing businesses west of areas that aren't part of the, the zoning, but they're in like a commercial yeah, district. commercially zoned. Um, so our actual, if you look at our official plan, uh, the downtown core area is quite a bit larger than the actual BIA area. So when the BIA was formed in 1979, it was deemed that I don't know what the logic of that decision was because I wasn't there, but that was the area that was drawn out to be the BIA area. But that's what we're seeing is, you know, the downtown seems to be gradually expanding westerly. And a lot of those businesses now are part of that area and would never um, have the opportunity to be, especially if we see future growth. This is a good opportunity for those businesses to participate through an associate membership program. This might be a silly question, but would it not make sense to try and amend the... Absolutely. And at some point, that may well be the desire of the board. Um, the board always has that option. And we discussed that initially. There were some discussions, um, you know, before a lot of these members came on board and even past iterations of the BIA that have looked at just that. What if we just expand the boundaries? This is a lot easier uh, way to start to bring some of those other businesses in. An expansion of the boundaries actually requires approval of council, but it also requires approval of all those businesses that would be included in that new boundary. So it's a it's a quite an extensive process, requires public consultation, approval of those businesses, whereas this is just a much easier way to, to start to explore that and see if there is an appetite for it. It might be easier if there's a bunch of associate members. Already, exactly. And that's what we're thinking. If we get enough, then at that point, there may be an argument to actually go and request a, a change in the, the geographic boundary. And then, sorry, a second question. Uh, is there any liability or insurance concern for associate members setting up, uh, say, pop-ups in front of a service-based business that wasn't using the space for a so so they would be using the public sidewalk and they would absolutely be required to have their own insurance. Yeah, for sure. To be able to set up. Sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize to you, chair. I should have let you take that. It's kind of jumped in. You did a great job. So yeah, that's essentially the gist of the program that we're recommending and the BI, the board doesn't need to, this is not a time sensitive decision. You can certainly think on this for the next month and we can bring it back at the next uh, BI meeting. If the board's not comfortable with moving forward tonight, certainly a new contact for a lot of people. So. Do you guys know of anywhere else that's doing this? Yes. Oh, so there, yeah, is that yeah. Right? Countless ones. I oh. pull up the, the spreadsheet there. And it's that's okay. Just I just back, but there, you know. but <laughs> yeah. probably about, I think probably about 50 yeah. NIAs in Ontario that had a public program. Um, that's sort of where we ended up with the parameters, oh, looked at where I the see. most common ones were and, and how they would how they would fit here and the pricing and the pricing would range from a little, a little less than what was proposed there up to, to ones that were escalating up into well in the hundreds of, mm -hmm. of dollars. So we sort okay. of settled on, on sort of the best of Hopefully, the best of, of what we saw in, in those other policies. Okay. Yeah, the list we've got 25 here that were confirmed it just based on a very quick scan that we did. Um, Kempville would be a, a good okay. example of a close neighbor that has a, an associate membership program. Um, sit, uh, downtown Belleville, Peterborough, Georgetown, Kingsville. Port Credit, Port Perry, St. Jacobs, a lot of communities of comparable size. Mm -hmm. Certainly a very common um, approach with other BIAs and the membership fee ranged everywhere from as high as 1,000 to as low as 75. But the average uh, average was 268. So we settled on 125, a reasonable amount. So if, if that, yeah, so we can, if that's something that, that the board want to do, we can move forward with it, starting with those next steps um, and look at perhaps uh, at the next meeting, establishing that working group and putting together that package. 
I think we should continue to investigate it, and that's the next step as a working group, and that will be to work out the fine details, right? Mm -hmm. like right now, we're still coming up with what's going to work, so we would go ahead with that, I think, continue to at least look into it, and then it also needs council consideration, so we have a lot of steps here, mm -hmm. so we're not fully committing ourselves either if we start to get through this and decide even through a working group I think we still have the opportunity but I think if we've gone this far we might as well keep the momentum going no I think we would be looking for a motion at this point a, a decision one way or the other unless the board does want to defer the decision to the next meeting I think those are the kind of the two options available. Sure. So, like a recommendation. So this would be to uh, one to move forward with the these next steps. Um, so that uh, the recommend recommendation would be that the board direct staff to move forward with the next steps in the associate membership program. Okay. Can I get a mover? <laughs> that that that's it. Yeah. To repeat it, right? Okay. <laughs> Charity. Okay. <laughs> and a seconder. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay. So we'll bring something forward for the next meetings, and that will lay out all the parameters of the program. So just a quick update here on the Digital Main Street program. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, we discussed the, the conclusion of the Provincial Digital Main Street funding. That ended on uh, March 31st. However, Prescott and Edwardsburg Cardinal have approved wage funding to carry the program to June 30th. So our, the Digital Main Street coordinator will, will stay in that, play, that position until the end of June. So I know most of you are probably familiar with the program and that it has included things like the digital transformation grant over the past four years. That is no longer something that, that will be available, but what will be available is Taylor working one-on-one -on -one with uh, businesses to do a sort of hand, hands-on business and marketing support. So something similar to the digital service squad program. And I think a few of you have worked uh, with Taylor and before him, Elizabeth, and before Elizabeth, me, with uh, some of the digital, uh, working on digital tools and getting things set up. So that's one of the main focuses moving, uh, moving forward with that position. One thing uh, we did want to ask, though, is if people with sort of experience with that program had any suggestions about uh, what what sort of, of hands-on services do you think would be most uh, most useful to, to small businesses over that period? So if there's anything that you, you have in mind that's been helpful or something that the Digital Main Street folks haven't been able to do over this time period that would be helpful. Uh, if anyone had any suggestions, feel free to either shout them out now or, or email them to Dan or I. And uh, I will be incorporating that into. Can you give me an example of what you mean by hands-on business? So, for example, if you if 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 your if your website was running slow, oh. and uh, <laughs> loading, and then uh, the digital Main Street person sort of working to try to try to sort out that that situation with you. Okay. Or if you were trying to set up a Facebook page. Uh, couldn't quite get that or ranging up to ideally things like uh, talking about talking through say an entire facebook advertising strategy for mm -hmm. for, for a couple months a, a social media marketing strategy going through there going through and doing an audit of all your current marketing strategies digital everything print whatever it may be and giving you advice in you know areas that you could refocus um and it's really that's the other beauty of this 
now that we're transitioning out of the digital main street, it doesn't need to just be digital marketing. So this could be anything, any sort of hands-on business supports that you're looking for, whether you're trying to navigate the CRA tax guidelines, whether you have some questions about business registration, are you looking for funding for a very specific thing? That's where, you know, between Taylor and Justin, um, their supports can, can really provide a lot more hands-on assistance to businesses. You know, um, there's been a lot of areas that they've been limited from and, and not able to even really delve into through this program. So it it's really runs the whole gamut. It's not restricted to just the, the digital, you know, online marketing, website, social media. It could be anything. You're looking for, you know, new new ways to target customers. Then Taylor could come in and take a look at what you're currently doing, provide some recommendations, maybe some resources out there that could assist. Yeah, I think that all mm -hmm. just sounds magical. And how do we register? Like, we're like <laughs> the program like the others where it'll come up with like an open for registration and you register and then they'll reach out and you kind of set up your goals. And yeah. then like yeah. physically... He would be able to do work sessions, some in person awesome. and then some stuff. Yeah, he will come and visit you on site, provide you with some of that hands-on assistance, and it will be very targeted too. So Taylor, you will hear from him. Um, you're going to see calls for businesses to reach out in our newsletter. We'll be having social media posts that are just going to be encouraging the business community to reach out with their issues. And we'll provide examples of some of those things, and that's where we're really looking to members. You know, you all operate businesses come up with, you know, one thing that maybe you've, you've questioned or, or wondered about in the past six months and send it to on to Justin. And it, you know, could be potentially one of those things that Taylor could assist with. Okay. What about if you have Taylor um, almost, okay, it's June 30th. Yeah. And when the people come to the pop-ups, maybe Taylor could like introduce himself to each person and then, um, show them how to do like <clears throat> like market research based on like how many customers like for them to keep track of like it's important for you to keep track of how many mm -hmm. customers that come through here and yeah and all that so that then they can use that information mm -hmm. to be able to see whether or not they'd be viable mm -hmm. to move it down mm -hmm. yeah it's a fantastic idea yeah. yeah and that's the other thing we really like too so this is above and beyond the business supports but there's some marketing supports that we'd really like to involve Taylor in as well. He's got a, a great skill set when it comes to that. So really like to involve him in some of the more community wide um, economic de development and tourism initiatives that we're doing. Content creation, business content creation too. That's something that we're really lacking in is just having great marketing materials for our businesses. Like, being able to show our businesses in action. You know, we don't have a lot of, of imagery that of businesses and customers interacting, customers shopping, um, proprietors interacting with them, people walking on the sidewalk with shopping bags. Like we really need a lot more of those, um, that content. So we're hoping Taylor can assist with uh, getting that uh, and then helping with website population as well is gonna be another big piece to that. But it can really be, yeah, it's it's wide open at this point. It's so think about anything business related that you've maybe needed support with in the past, a question about, and and this doesn't need to be. It's an ongoing thing for the, over the next three months. So you know, as we're as the program evolves, um, certainly we're wanting to see new ideas all the time. And then it would very much be, um, Dustin would be taking the lead as far as actually coordinating what those supports are, are going to look at, at, like based on some of the feedback that we have from businesses, his knowledge of what the needs are out there already as well. But we're excited about the next three months. And the hope is too, that there may be another funding announcement. Like it's also meant to try and bide some time in the hopes that maybe there'll be another pot of money out there, a new, you know, hybrid digital Main Street program that that might be able to transition into that would receive, you know, government funding support, ideally, and not just rely on the municipalities to continue funding it.
there no other questions or thoughts? Anyway. <clears throat> Come forward to the downtown public art project. So I mentioned a little earlier when we talked about the pop-up vendors, uh, Studio Marty. She uh, she does fine art, she does painting, um, she does murals. She's also very much into uh, classes. She She's done a few for uh, BIA, for town events. She did one on the promenade two years ago. She, she did one at the clock tower uh, this past summer. And she likes to try to find ways to get people to participate in art. So she had sent in, sent to me a couple of weeks ago, this idea. What if, while well, she was at the pop-ups this summer, she did an ongoing sort of art project where you could come down, basically paint by numbers a small portion of a larger painting. And then at the end of the summer, those were all put together into a large mural. Now that is the face of a cat, lion, tiger up there. That's not what the idea for the mural would be. That's one of the examples you sent in. But her idea was, what if we could take this and put it together and at the end of the summer, you'd have this big public art project. And it just so happens that in the My Main Street funding request that, that the town of Prescott submitted, one of the, one of the, the things they were looking at was a uh, downtown art installation to sort of help beautify that spot in front of shop shoppers where there was previously an entrance to the parking lot, which has been closed there for three years. So the idea was uh, to sort of spruce up a barricade with, with some designs, with some street trees and, and then this mural in behind and Marnie's suggestion seemed to start to really align with one side of that mural. So one side, the south facing side in this idea would be uh, the maps, the informational stuff. You're in Prescott, you, you, you want to find some stuff that would be south facing, but the north facing idea would be to uh, look at uh, the, the, per the permanent installation of this, this public mural that uh, people, visitors, people from Prescott, people visiting would create themselves over the course of the summer. And as Justin said, this would not be, this is just an example that is, is or just for discussion purposes, but the mural itself would be, um, would very much evoke Prescott. Um, so we've just kind of expressed that to Marnie, we want a Prescott design, um, something that as soon as you see it, you know, you're in Prescott. Um, so she's got a lot of great ideas that she's coming up with, but we love the fact that it has that that interactive piece to it. Like it would truly be a community art project and have that buy-in and then hopefully be respected and embraced by the community once it's installed. Um, and we would certainly have protective coverings put over it. So God forbid if any vandalism ever happened, it could easily be removed without destroying the art piece. Um, and then we thought it would be really neat if you could have everyone sign, have their signature signed and incorporate those signatures in the art piece as well, either as a plaque separate to that, that just has, you know, every single person that contributed to this beautiful piece of art or incorporated right into the design itself by Marnie when it comes to do the final art piece. Uh, you know, once you would have different panels and we thought we could even mount the panels potentially to the backside of the pop-up sheds because they're empty. And that could be like a, a canvas. And then you would also have this beautiful canvas at the pop-ups all summer long that just adds a whole other art um, piece to it as well. And then as Justin said, the other side would be maps and some sort of an interactive element too, because we really want to give people the opportunity to leave their mark. Um, whether it be, you know, something like that, just an ability to kind of put in a little testimony to say what you love about Prescott, what brought you to Prescott and have it almost be like a living postcard of our visitors that come to town. Not exactly sure how that'll look, but that's the general idea behind it. I think that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. I know, I love like that. I couldn't be more excited. Are we gonna be able to like approve the... the oh, absolutely, yeah. It would okay. be the approved final design. Okay. And then of course, you know, we would, um, 
go to council for approval as well. We would want their rubber stamp of approval. I see um, others maybe have too, but this kind of concept rolling through social media and different communities, and I loved it instantly. And when I seen this, I just thought, yeah, it's so neat. I think it will be such a popular thing that we will be looking for other places, <laughs> like you said, to be putting these yeah. like squares of art and stuff because I think uh, I think it won't take long to fill something like that and I think I think a lot of people will want to partake they'll want to leave their mark mm -hmm. some way yeah and if it's done where it's kind of like the, the the overall design is a little bit controlled then it will come together in a really beautiful manner I have no doubt yeah it'll have a nice flow yeah that's so neat yeah Justin who would be responsible for maintaining it so the town will be. And is there like this funding, how much was, like, we don't know if we got the funding was just requested. It was never, how much was the funding request? Funding request of 5,000. So do we know how much something like this would cost? So she, she's working out the costing right now. Her oh. original idea was for canvas and interior. Uh, so she's had to sort of start repricing. She's looking at a, a wood back backing that would be lacquered once it was there. And then basically once it's mounted, it would be almost sealed in a frame. So that, but she's working on the, the pricing for the project there now. One of, so there, there's that My Main Street funding that's been requested. <clears throat> there's also that allocated $1,000 from uh, 2023 for the iHeart Main Street that didn't go forward in the BIA. So, that could be something you could allocate there. And in the budget for this year, uh, the board had set aside $3,000 to consider public art projects. So that could be something that, that could be incorporated in there too. And as far as the actual cost, that would not cover the entire cost, certainly not the 5,000. We were estimating that would probably cost. The overall cost is estimated at about 7,500 for the entire, and that it's not just the mural, that's the trees, the the other side of the mural, um, the new barrier at the bottom. <laughs> and then the artist is, is, is the artist donating their time? So that, that would be worth That would be oh, the I see. cost proposal, yeah. So I think what, and she, what she would do is probably pitch a cost for the actual design. Mm -hmm. And then she's going to be at the pop-ups anyway. So this mm -hmm. is something that she would just have, you know, ongoing as, as she's operating her pop-up. I see. Yeah. But it would be more to, yes, cover that cost of the initial design to come up with the concept and for her to do the final assembly of all those pieces together. Um, would it be a nice idea to reserve one of those squares for the BIA to then have maybe mini squares of all the board members or something like that, or, or just one for the BIA that would then signify our mark on there and we could get in on it as well as we're throwing it out there in the kind of dreaming up stage? <laughs> or um, similar to how um, <clears throat> International Women's Day, you guys uh, like sponsored a mm -hmm. like a position. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So what if what if we did like a spot like the BIA sponsored a square or whatever it is, and then a like business push like, like mm -hmm, or something? Yeah, yeah. some sort of promotion, and then that could also be. A reason you'd want to be part of the BIA as an associate because you get to participate in these things that then would potentially be that's, yeah we could do different things like that. But so people are not paying to participate, right? This is just a, no like to and have a community is versus so yeah I I just I'm not sure I think I love that idea. There's a way to do it, but the only problem with that is I don't know if the business would be able to get something in return right because it's meant to be more of a a piece of art versus someone getting their logo for example right. put right. on a sign right <clears throat> i think there's still certainly ways that you could highlight businesses within this and we could talk to marty as well to say i'm sure that she would have some great ideas to say you know how do we maybe make this 
and turn this into maybe there's an even an outer rim possibly mm -hmm. a piece of art right that's a separate mm -hmm. aspect um that then could be used as a way to and that could be maybe a sponsor yeah business is on board yeah and take approach it more as an actual direct sponsorship and then and that would be another option too you know if we wanted to look at maybe having something more dedicated mm -hmm. we could approach businesses for independent sponsorships i love all this i love this though and with marty's idea as well I mean, maybe the BIA could, yeah, sponsor. And then we could recruit more on the panels. So on the back there with the map, does that map, um, does it highlight the business, like different businesses? Or what is it that it's like the landmarks on? So the that map? is our tearaway. It's our tourism map. So it has a broader, you know, it has the Riverwalk District, the downtown core actually highlighted. But maybe that's something that we could do. And have an maybe actual logos or something of where the yeah. are maybe oh hmm. or be able to incorporate it somehow with our actual business directory right mm -hmm. but yeah you are here, Matt, yeah because mm -hmm. mm. I love the idea of making it also a, a bit of an advertising opportunity for businesses. But I think it would be certainly a good investment on the part of the, the BIA if there was consideration to providing some financial contribution to the project. It's I think it's really the first of many. Um, you know, we've talked about so many potential art projects from murals on buildings to sidewalk decals to artwork on street artwork um we implemented we had a sidewalk artist come in and do a really cool rendering of our logo in front of the clock tower last year and some artwork down in the promenade site that was a huge hit um we'd really love to build that out more and more and more and just you know continue to add color and, and art to the downtown because it's something that really does it makes people stop and take a second look it lasted a while too it did mm -hmm. oh yeah way longer than it was supposed to yeah maybe because we didn't get much of a winter i don't know yeah. is that funding already earmarked for anything else that request or uh the main street funding is that earmarked for anything else already the no like it is specifically for the mural oh that's what the application was filled out for for and a number of other projects yes oh, I see. yeah so that was one of i believe six different projects that we were going to try and implement um through that funding so we were requesting five thousand dollars for six projects or no for just for that yeah Perfect. so are you guys looking for a motion for for like what are we looking for right now so at this point it's more informational oh uh, okay. finalizing their costs and i find the mini meeting that that would uh to have, a, have a request to sort of look at whether you want to allocate that uh, I have Main Street funding um, <coughs> to hear potentially more to this. this is, mm -hmm. to, to see uh, what's Land the ground on this and, um, uh, consider it for the for the next next month and then hopefully there is a uh, uh, at that next meeting uh, kind of a discussion of the actual uh, costs and potential ideas moving forward from there. Do we know of any other projects that could be coming up? Art related, I think yes. this is really the one that we'd like to start with. And yeah. I, like, I would love for the BIA to take on an annual project. You know, this could be the annual one for 2024 and maybe over the next year um, establish some ideas for what future projects we'd like to pursue. And then keep doing that yearly. Yeah, and just have that always part of your beautification. Every year we do some sort of art installation, whether it be a, a crosswalk painting, a mural on a building, um, a standalone mural like that, uh, sidewalk decals, sidewalk art. Yeah, I agree. New ban, you know, banners, things like that. Okay. But again, we do recognize there's limited funds. And this is something that would, of course, be a shared economic development department would be contributing 50% uh, of that cost as well, whatever the BIA contributes. 
some question because I don't know, but if we were to start gathering a plethora of associate members, that money would go towards our budget as well, right? Yes. Yeah. So that would go into your regular your number of your annual budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's certainly a way for the BIA to also increase its its budget without having to increase the levy of the existing businesses. Cool. To do more things like, like this. Yeah. Anybody have any other questions? I like that one. Well, much better than the concrete barrier. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> okay. All right. So the 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 last update item. Uh, if you're not aware, the Eastern Ontario Firefighters Games are coming uh, to Prescott on I believe that's Father's Day weekend, uh, June 14th to 16th. They'll primarily be held at the Leo Boyman Community Centre, but as part of that event, um, there is a companion tour that goes on. So these, these, are, these are the partners, spouses that are coming <clears throat> to town with the people competing in the games. And on that, so on June uh, 14th, this companion tour will be going through Prescott to different sites, events, activities, or on, I believe, the evening of the 14th. Uh, there will be some entertainment down at the pop-up site that evening for them and, and uh, for uh, you know, a broader group. And they will also be going to different sites. The stores will be encouraged to be open and do something different like a sip and shop, uh, entertainment within, within their places of business, uh, activating that sidewalk. As part of that, the, uh, there will be the Kingston Trolley, uh, hired trolley in town on the 14th for the Companions Tour. Uh, to, to take those folks around, it will operate almost like a, a, a little mini public transit for that so people can get on and get off at different locations. So there's an opportunity to extend that trolley uh, through both Saturday and Sunday for public ridership. So this would be for uh, be able to make more of a weekend of it. So there'll be a stop at that firefighters games. There'll be uh, perhaps uh, stops. There will be stops through downtown places like places like the pop up central locations going down to the to the west end, uh, other spots through town where people can get on, get off provide an opportunity for a weekend long promotion on that, on that long weekend. So essentially what we're looking at now are, are the potentials for the promotions that weekend, um, the possibility of, of perhaps BIA funding uh, to look at those as part of a, a broader project that weekend. Uh, and ideas related to that Companions Tour Day, uh, ideas about potential activations downtown for, for, for that night and any ideas you might have. We really thought extending, I've been booked a trolley tour for a uh, Ripfest event that I was involved with in a former job. Huge success, had a huge response from the community. Um, you could not keep, like people were clamoring to get on this thing. And it would be, it would be a guided tour as well. So there's a tour guide that will actually provide you with information about the community. So as you're passing attractions and different, we would be highlighting different shops and services along the route and have it be fully open to the public Saturday, Sunday. So just a hop on, hop off, it would go uptown downtown, potentially even go up to over to the ACCC if we feel maybe there's a need to have some uh, spillover parking there, but really provide people with an opportunity to experience Prescott, whether you're a local resident or a visitor here for the Fireman's Games or just here for Father's Day weekend out and about with your father. We would also include the golf course as a stop as part of the Sunday tour on Father's Day, assuming there's going to be probably a lot of activity there. So Really just, yeah, it's had a huge response in previous experience. It would be complimentary, of course. And then the great thing about this vehicle is we can attach magnets to, to it. So we would essentially cover all the Kingston <laughs> um, marketing with our own marketing. 
So it would become the Explore Prescott trolley for the weekend, but we could also sell advertising and offset the expense because it is an expensive venture. It is not cheap to, to bring this in. So we're hoping to maybe offset that cost by selling advertising and potentially maybe get a sponsorship through the BIA as well, if you saw fit, thought it would be a good attraction. Um, you know, as Justin said, it would be very much focused in that downtown core. So doing a regular circuit through the downtown and really, you know, introducing people to the different businesses and attractions that we have. And hopefully we can get as many businesses as possible, <coughs> you know, doing a lot of things that day, using your sidewalk space, having sip and chops, things like that. So what's the cost? Uh, for six, it's twenty one hundred for a four hour uh, stint. So we'd be looking at forty two hundred for the two days, Saturday, Sunday. And are the first days covered, Dana? Yeah, first days, yeah, covered. The Friday, okay. covered. Okay. Yeah, and we're looking at bringing it in on both the Saturday and the Sunday, two additional days. And is this something that the economic development office one is also going to pitch in on? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we thought it might be an opportunity for the BIA to get some promotion. So in exchange for the sponsorship, the BIA would get advertising on the side of the trolley. And then we would also approach businesses to do their own individual sponsorships as well. It's a great way to promote your business. It'll be traveling all over town. Who makes the magnets? We would do them, yeah. Okay. We would look after the production. Yeah, we've got sign companies that we work with. So, Danny, you said uptown. Uptown where? Like uptown of the grocery store, the beer store? Like Thinking more of a central stop, uptown. Um, honestly, Ruth, I was kind of envisioning Tim Hortons to be maybe a really good spot. Just because it's got such a huge parking lot. It's central to everything that's in the downtown, aside from the grocery store and um, the hotel. Yeah. You know, I think it would make sense if the hotel was open to go yeah. that far north, but I, I really feel like just one stop in the uptown, maybe at the Churchill kind of corner would be the, the best. And that's where we've got the most local, you know, um, businesses that would be traveled to, I think. Okay. But we definitely want it to be a community-wide thing on the Saturday, Sunday. Would the board be interested in covering any of these costs for Saturday or Sunday for the shuttle? Or the trolley, I should call it. It is cute. Yeah. Very much got that San Francisco. It yeah. is, yes, a well, trolley I, on tires. When I first read this, I was like, the firefighters games, and I looked at it, I'm like, wait, that's not a fire truck. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it certainly matches with the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's super cute. Their event. So is there set, like, is there a certain price for the, like, that the BIA would pay for advertising as opposed to sponsorship or, like, to sponsor a certain amount of money to help bring it in? I would say whatever the BIA sees fit is providing, we would provide you in exchange for that two very large size ads on both sides. Oh, I see. So you would have free advertising. It would be something like Explore Prescott and the Riverwalk District and then have QR code on there that would link to the business directory for the downtown or just the website. We kind of yeah would debate which was the best way to go for that. But yeah. Yeah. So it would be. And you're hoping to um, offset the cost by advertising. Yeah. And then we would sell smaller ads. So, you know, I think I would, I would envision, you know, we would essentially take this entire space with, Explore Prescott, have Riverwalk District, very prominent, and then get into selling smaller ads on the exterior. And on both sides of the bus. Now, did I hear you say something about four hours? Yeah, four hours. So uh, $2,100 for a four-hour uh, tour. And it would just be on the loop. But that's not all they're going to be. Like, is that what we only have them for four hours each day? Yeah. 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 So it's a 5.50 an hour. So we could add, um, and that's what we're also hoping to do. If we get enough sponsors, we'd like to turn it into a six hour yeah. both days. Oh, 
but it's essentially five fifty an hour. And what are the hours that you want to operate? We're thinking um, probably twelve to four, <clears throat> but we'd like to bump it up to six p.m. if we at all could. I think those would probably be the ideal times during daylight. You know, certainly open to suggestions. Um, Do we have an idea of like what you're going to charge for advertising? Not at this point, no. We wanted to get a sense of what the BIA was um, prepared to contribute. You know, I'm thinking probably seventy-five to one hundred dollars <laughs> for maybe a um, an eighteen-inch square ad, and then maybe we would get up into two by three ads for one hundred and fifty. Just kind of off the top of my head, haven't really put a lot of thought into that. We very very early at this point. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> so does the, the trolley come with the driver, I'm assuming, yeah. right? And does the driver have like a microphone? Yeah. Does the driver have to be the person doing the microphone or could it be switched out to maybe like the historical society, the art guild? Like there's so much opportunity for partnership that I see. There, it, we absolutely could. Um, I would want to be, we really want to keep it we want it to be a mix, right? Mm -hmm. I want it to be a mix of attractions and the odd historical site property. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want it to get too historical tour or too the other way, right? So that's why we're thinking maybe using their person, we could very much have a very, you know, kind of structured script, mm -hmm. work with the um, historian to come up with a really good, you know, good components to include for that historical side. Um, but certainly, you know, open to that, maybe using local people as an alternative. Like having like individual but like personalities, right? Yeah. Come on and maybe or take like a I don't know, half hour increments or, or have a different feature, right? Like maybe this hour is the historical theme and maybe the other hour is attractions. You know, we could even separate it out like that. So it's not the same script for the entire four hours. I was just thinking in terms of showing all sides of Prescott. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. here, right? Yeah. It's not just the downtown. Yeah. No, and that's very much what it would be. Is we that's why we wanted to open it up to the community as well, so we can pass by some of those historic sites and some of those other key and talk about some of the industries. Also, incorporate the waterfront and some of the past industries and things that used to happen. And what you see now does not represent what you would have seen a hundred years ago. Yeah, and even like the Coast Guard, like there's so many yeah, people that could participate. Yeah, if you really want to get the whole, mm -hmm. and that's where we would work with all those organizations ahead of time in developing the script. That's kind of how we saw the approach. Um, might be an easier way to at least because I feel like people that do that for a living have mm -hmm. like a persona about them that keep you engaged, mm -hmm. right? Where Somebody that doesn't do that on a daily basis. Yeah. Might drone on a bit. Yeah. 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 And they can, like, they're experiencing in preparing these these scripts, right? And to, how to be engaging for the public. And it's very theatrical. And your timing of when you're pointing these things out in relation to, you know, how fast the bus is traveling, too, right? Not overwhelming people with content. Um, but I think, yeah, we would certainly work very closely with the likes of the Historical Society, the Arts Guild, um, some of the main attraction providers, the Fort would be a big partner, Coast Guard. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you highlighted these industries and areas and things like that, would that is that a way to also uh, generate revenue? Like, would it be like, oh, if you pay so much money we'll put you on the tour is that or is that like mm -hmm. i don't know how that works with these trolleys or i think i think you do that side and, okay. yeah and just feature anything that we feel is a interesting you know tourism or historical element that would be a good fit and then they could just contribute maybe in other ways right okay and, yeah, there's no requirement to sponsor to be included because that was the other thing that's the other thing i find that is, and i hate to you know redredge this but the Tours and publications. Again, it's very much a pay to play thing. So if you are an advertising business, you don't get a mention. 
Okay. So that I don't necessarily think is a, a fair approach because our mandate is to promote everyone, right? Everyone who's within that that BIA district. And then for our perspective, any every business that's within our geographical boundaries. And I think, yeah, there's other ways that we can drum up advertising. I think it's such a cool idea. I wish we could have it like all summer long. <laughs> Well, I think, you know, we'll see. I do. I think it's so cute. It could really, could start to be a regular thing that we bring in for events. Maybe it's a Canada Day thing for next year. Yeah, I think it's such a cute idea. I like And I will say, just in our initial conversations, the um, the trolley guy was very excited about the, just, you know, new location, developing a new script, and yeah. Very excited about the opportunity. So do they have, like, does this company have, like, a plethora of trolleys? Yeah. yeah. They operate all over Kingston throughout the summer. I think they probably have about 10 trolleys operating at any given time. And then they have a whole fleet that they charter out to different people. Like Private groups. How fast do they go? Like, how do they get, like... Highway speed. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They'll do, you know... I take feel like I'd be nervous on. going highway speed in that... But <laughs> it's just like a bus. It's just like a city bus with a different exterior. But it's basically a bus underneath yeah. that cool covering. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're thinking like for the BIA, a hundred and fifty dollars, or were you thinking like if we're doing two, so three hundred? I would say that was more for what we would sell with the smaller. App oh, I for. see. Okay. I would suggest. You know, the BIA maybe look at a $500 contribution, I think would probably be so very in line with what well, you Based would get on like the cost of having it for the two days extra, I think it's, I think it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, what is everybody else's thoughts? Are you saying $500 for the signage on it, not $500 to contribute to the 4200 it, that's essentially it, what it right, both, yeah. right? it's part of your contribution, you get signage. So it's a very low amount. That would be a very, but I also recognize TIA's budget is limited. Well, we were in talking about it thinking probably 500 to 1,000. Yeah, that's what we usually do is a minimum of 500 when we do special events. So that would be a good starter point. <laughs> And again, it's more of a, you know, it's not an expectation that the BIA fund it, but it's a nice show of faith that, yes, the BIA supports what we're doing and sees it as a benefit to the downtown and contributes nominally to the cost. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, what did you guys say that we could expect from the firefighters games in terms of people coming here i forget oh so they have we're thinking about 400 with just firemen games competitors and um extended family and friends that does not factor in any of the external spectators that will come and these are you know big spectator events they bring mm -hmm. a lot of people that yeah, have absolutely no connection to fire to come out and yeah. watch these yeah but i think that's another thing to consider is yeah there's going to be a draw Okay. Yes. So, and there's a huge amount of people in the community for the entirety of the weekend. They're all something else we neglected to mention. Sorry, is there camping just east of the pop up sites? So they'll all be there set up for the entire weekend, spending money in town, bringing a lot of um, visitors into the community. And we just thought it would be, you know, a great weekend with this influx of people to provide this service, not only for them, a lot of the visitors coming in and the local residents mm -hmm. it's it's very much a community thing too and i there's a lot of overlap in tourism and what we do sometimes and but it very much needs to be a benefit to the community as well and so people can experience their own town in a completely different way So what are we looking at to do now? Make a motion? And to yeah, so yeah. would you like to propose a motion then that the BIA support the firefighter games shuttle cost for up to 500? That's what we do. That's reasonable, yeah. Okay. Can I get a mover? Okay. And a seconder? Okay, perfect. All in favor? Carried. Yay.
Yay. We're excited. This is going to be a good one. It was yeah, they're fun. I've seen them in other communities and and our boys will be participating on a sip. Yes, got firefighter. Oh yeah. For Cardinal Cat. Oh yes, all the local yeah. Yeah, departments and the fire, you know, yeah, pretty in place and large surrounding area. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we have I think there's 12 teams confirmed. Something like that. at this point, 12 departments, yeah. It's always like right, like my husband's on the fire um, on the fire department and it's always a big hurrah. Mm -hmm. Like it gets it gets busy in every little small town that they do it at. So and they'll be they're gonna have a big um they'll have entertainment on the Saturday and we're looking at having entertainment on Friday down at the pop ups as part of the companion program, which is also entertainment throughout the weekend. So you'll see things happening. We also wanted to do as part of the companion tour, maybe like a mini market at the clock tower, bring our market back to the, the old location for a one night only affair and have something happening, you know, within that space as well and really activate the downtown and yeah, try and keep them there for as long as possible. Okay. So we'll head on to the agenda items. Oh, we have the downtown business and development update. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. My bad. Yeah, so there is a picture of our most recent um, business celebration. This was long overdue. Uh, we actually celebrated the subway opening uh, one year to the date of their opening. They uh, wanted to move forward with a soft opening and work any of those kinks out had some uh, corporate issues that they had to navigate as well before we could actually make it official. So we were really excited to make it official on April 3rd. And it's been a great first year of operation for Subway and they look forward to many more. So it was a great opportunity to uh, wish them well and all their success today. And then we have the St. Lawrence Shakespeare Festival office has officially relocated to the new visitor center and museum. They have closed their former office, which is actually being renovated now to hopefully accommodate a new uh, commercial venture in the near future. And we're very happy to welcome them to the Visitor Center Museum. We will have an official ribbon cutting. We're actually just getting uh, new signage added to the building. So you'll see new signage go up soon, and then we'll make it official. And they're very happy to be there and um, definitely encourage you to pop in. They have announced their production lineup for this year's festival, so you can um, definitely uh, check it out on their website. And then upcoming openings and anniversaries, we have the Boutique Thrift. That is uh, still pending for spring, as you, I'm sure if you've uh, walked or driven by that location, you can see that the new owner is uh, madly working to get that place ready. And Tim's Fish and Chips, we do have a correction here. Their uh, 30th anniversary is April 18th. So I'll be sending an email out to everyone to invite you to that. There'll be a grand uh, ribbon cutting celebration at 12.30 p.m. on the 18th. I apologize, that was my error. We thought it, it was the 10th and we're just corrected um, after the agenda had already gone in. And then we have a new business, Learn to ABA, it is gonna be opening at 160 King Street which you've probably noticed that is the location that had the boarded window for quite some time and now has a new window. So it's looking much better on the south side of King Street, just um, beside Outpost Cafe. That will be opening soon. And what is that? Uh, autism services. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's a new service business. It's going to provide uh, programming for uh, autistic families and their children. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And then we have Lost and Found Community Outreach. We'll be celebrating their first anniversary on April 21st. So we'll uh, be presenting them and of course, Tim's Fish and Chips with a certificate from council and hope to see all of you there. Upcoming events, apologies, this is uh, this has happened already. <laughs> kind of got our dates mixed up for the meeting. Um, I hope everyone had an opportunity to take in the solar eclipse. It certainly was an event not to be missed yesterday. Um, Starter Company Plus graduation takes place here at Prescott Town Hall tomorrow. That runs from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. So that is a program operated through the Leeds Grenville uh, Small Business Enterprise Center. 
And we have two businesses, uh, one of which is Katarina's that will be graduating from that program tomorrow. So we're uh, happy to congratulate them as well as the River Vibes uh, Picnic will be uh, graduating from that program tomorrow too. So it was great to see a couple of our local businesses participate and of course, always happy to host these events here in town. And then this Saturday, we have the Bytown and Prescott Model Train Show from 10 to 4 at the Leo Boyman Community Center. This is going to be a huge event. Um, I think it's not going to rival Eclipse, but there are going to be a lot of people in town this Saturday. The, uh, there is a very large uh, train enthusiast community, and they are all going to be descending on Prescott. So should be a great event. We'll explore Prescott. We'll be there with a booth to provide visitor information and to promote the downtown BIA, of course. And then we have the Prescott Figure Skating Club has a skating competition this Saturday, which um, we sponsored. So that's going to be a great event. The town is contributing uh, some Prescott swag and we've got some information, some Prescott dollars to all of the skaters. So hopefully your businesses will see some local figure skaters coming in and spending their dollars uh, this weekend or after. And then National, excuse me, National Tourism Week is coming up uh, from April 15th to 19th. And we're just uh, in the process of planning some fun uh, activities and promotions. So stay tuned for those. That's it for me. Now I think we're on the agenda. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> All right, on to the agenda items. One, um, one agenda item. Justin, will you take it over? So at the, at the last meeting, uh, we discussed the idea of establishing temporary placemaking and marketing slash promotion working groups. So these would be small groups that, that meet uh, to discuss sort of the, the specific, uh, those two specific sort of lanes that the BIA works in. So what I've done here is put together a little idea of what each group would be focusing on before we start talking about whether folks want to uh, volunteer for those. But so the placemaking working group, the idea there would be that you're talking about beautif beautification topics, public art and installations. So things like we discussed earlier tonight with Marnie, you, you'd uh, brainstorm, provide input on those. Input on that, my Main Street uh, application and what comes out of that. So that would be the, those projects that Dana talked about that were part of that larger application. Uh, things like uh, beautification in front of the, the uh, gardens in front of the Coast Guard would be one example of other part, part of that. And then you would also we'd also be looking to the placemaking group to provide feedback and talk to other businesses about the ongoing installations downtown. So that would be an opportunity to discuss things like uh, the public art going in and what businesses uh, thought or what they, what they suggested for that. Things like the patios, things like the promenade, to get some some feedback and engagement on on those topics. The marketing and promotions working group, on the other hand, uh, we're looking at topics like summer social media planning and campaigns, what you wanted to focus on for promotion this summer. Focusing on that bigger summer promotion, so things like we discussed previously, uh, bringing back the summer passport this summer, discussed previously uh, having those evening shopping nights again, like last summer, like the River Walk Thursdays. And then that group hopefully would also help uh, assist and support getting businesses engaged in, in that process in the summer, getting, getting doors open for that evening shopping, getting events happening throughout, uh, throughout the downtown for something like that. And just, again, getting feedback and, and, and engaging the businesses downtown. So per the bylaw, uh, we can have temporary working groups uh, as long as those groups don't meet a quorum of the board, which would mean you'd be able to, to have up to four regular members on each working group. Uh, based on those previous discussions, uh, the idea would be to look at meeting with those groups uh, once a month through tourism season 
so through, through the end of the summer. With the previous committee structure, uh, the board decided to go forward with the two Tuesdays after the regular board meeting as the regular committee meeting working group days. You don't necessarily have to do that, but that, that could be an idea, idea for that. So th this tonight would be uh, to see if people were, were interested volunteering in, for one of these two groups and uh, looking at potential first meeting for those. Would anybody like to volunteer for? I can volunteer for the marketing promotion marketing group for me. Okay. And that's where just kind of going back to the associate members. That's a prime example of where if we had associate members of an unlimited number of associate members could sit on these yeah. subcommittees. Whereas <laughs> we're very limited with the DIA members, it can't be more than four, or then you you you're deemed to be over quorum, right? right. So that's a great argument for instituting the associate membership program. I'll volunteer myself for the uh, placemaking. I'm so oh. enthusiastic about that part since the beginning, so that seems like the right place. <laughs> okay. Thinking marketing promotion. Okay. Anyone else? I can't make a commitment for summertime. It's, uh, it's busy. Yeah. I can't. This doesn't do committees. <laughs> it'll preclude you from participating in any mm -hmm. of these. You know, everything comes back to the board. So you can still always contribute to these committees, um, you know, in other ways too. And you also don't need to decide tonight. So don't anyone be pressure to say yay yeah, or nay tonight. You can always send us, think about it, send us an email afterwards if you decided something. If you want more information, Justin can send you that. Um, but yeah, don't feel that you've got to. <laughs> can you not get other members to be on the committee as well? It doesn't just have to be us. It does not necessarily have to be no. board members. Oh, no, and it can be community. No. Yeah, so it's just so members from the community, like we did with the Wonderland. I can rope into helping you. Mm -hmm. they got lots of people that can yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Especially when they can't, can't talk back to you. <laughs> so if you're talking about her kids, <laughs> 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 we, we could start from some sort of this this volunteer list here tonight, and I can circulate an email uh, with these these things, mm -hmm. and you can feel free to if there are other downtown businesses you think might be interested, other folks that might be interested, yeah. um, uh, vol vol partially volunteer them. Yeah. And uh, yeah. if it, it, we also have, I, I believe Nicole will uh, likely want to be a member of one of the two committees. Like yeah. Volunteer Nicole. Yeah. And uh, Cindy, I had when she had said she wasn't able to be here tonight, had asked her if which if she was interested in one, she hasn't got back to me yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure she'll be interested in one too. So I, I could, uh, unfortunately, Charity, Holly, and Jeannie, you've already volunteered yourself, so you're permanently on those committees, but uh, <laughs> we, have, uh, we can circulate something something to the, the members and to those two folks that weren't there tonight, and you feel free to forward it on to, to anyone that might be interested. and. Once we get that, we'll maybe give that a week and then uh, send out a doodle poll to establish some opening dates for that. Okay. And then we can see what sort of initial response we get to that and always even do a more public call out mm -hmm. as well. Do some public facing posting. Mm -hmm. um, do a target. Keep an earnings letter. Right? Yeah. Yeah. A call, and maybe we'll do that anyways. Just put a call right. out for people that these are the committee opportunities. Anyone from the public or business community that is interested in participating, and again, like those are things that you can come in and out of. You don't need to attend everyone per se, and you know people are busy. We understand that. So if we can just even get a big enough group of people, we always know we're going to have a few right showing up, come up with ideas. Um. What about uh, kind of targeting, I guess, um, the farmer's market participants and mm -hmm. those reaching out to the farmer's mm -hmm. market? Because yeah. they would have recommendations and ideas for all this stuff. Great idea. They would like to get involved. 
And I would even build on that and say maybe pop up vendors. Yeah. Give us another source. Yeah. Potential oh, like members. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And anyone that you just don't know about that you've talked to that's expressed an interest in getting more involved in the community, this could be their thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we won't be doing. We won't, we won't do a motion then. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, circulate that and we'll do a little bit of public call. Okay. And so we'll hold on on when yeah. it's there. Okay. All right. Well, on to item 10, if there's no other questions. Okay. Um, we're going to head into closed session. The recommendation is that the Board of Management enter into closed session under Section 239 2B of the Municipal Act, personal matters about unidentifiable individuals, including municipal employees, and that the Economic Development Officer and the BIA Coordinator remain in the room for the discussion. May I 